to the power steering pump. What is up guys and welcome back to another video here at the Drop Clutch Garage. Another very exciting video planned for you guys. Um, it is time to install the power steering conversion. All right guys, I'm just gonna take a few moments and just go over all the parts that the kit comes with. Um, this is um, Ferguson's power steering conversion kit. It'll work for both your manual steering cars as well as your cars that came with power steering. Um, it's much more budget friendly than uh, a typical rack and pinion setup um, for practically the same driving experience. Um, this is going to be much better handling than um, the original style power steering which came with the um, power ram. Um, so this eliminates that completely uh, and gets rid of that leaky power ram and the binding that you may feel sometimes with that original power steering system. Uh, so let me go ahead and take you through those parts. All right guys, so this is the gearbox that comes with the Bergerson kit. As you can see, we have two power steering lines right here. Uh, this is a Saginaw style pump. Um, so this is where you get your power assist from. You don't have the added power ram that you would in the original style power steering systems. So this is a, a much more simple setup. And what's really nice about this kit is you actually use um, your factory pitman arm that came with the manual steer cars, uh, as well as the same drag links and uh, tie rod ends as well. So you'll use all the steering linkage that you would for a regular manual steer car. This is the power steering pump. It comes with all hardware and the bracket already installed. Here we have a, a supplied rag joint, uh, which the original steering setup does not have. Um, so because it uses this, we do have to make some clearance and actually cut the steering column. Um, not quite sure yet how much we have to cut off the bottom, but we do have to cut some off the bottom of the steering column, which is really the only major modification you have to make uh, to install this system. Uh, this will uh, bolt onto the firewall. This is what the steering column goes through. And then we have our power steering lines. What's nice about this system, we only have two lines, both going to the Staginaw pump, to the power steering pump. And that's really all guys. That's all that's this kit has uh, that's needed. So I think I'm gonna get started with um, mounting up the pump and seeing which way um, I will have to configure it for my setup here. Uh, we'll then go ahead and bolt in the Staginaw gearbox. I do still have to remove um, the Pitman arm from my old gearbox. So I'll go ahead and take care of that as well and get that all cleaned up uh, so it's ready to install. All right guys, let's get after it. All right guys, so prior to disassembly, it's really important to get a measurement before you take anything apart. Um, once you take off the steering wheel, you're gonna wanna measure the distance from the end of the steering bell here to the top of the shaft. Because we are gonna have to modify the column, we are gonna have to cut off at the bottom, and that's how we're gonna get that measurement. So go ahead and take your straight edge, just like this, and then measure from the straight edge to the bell. Uh, as you can see, mine is already disassembled. Um, it has been apart before I even got this kit. So I'm gonna have to sneak up on that measurement. Um, but if you haven't taken yours apart yet, definitely grab this measurement, it'll save you a lot of time. So basically, it looks something like that. And you wanna grab that exact measurement. All right guys, now once we have that measurement, you're clear to disassemble everything and reinstall all the new components. And what we'll do with that measurement is once we have all the new components installed, is we'll transfer it onto the new steering shaft and we'll put a little mark. We'll put a little mark from whatever that distance was from the top of the shaft to the bell of the column. Guys, well then we're gonna take our tape measure and we're gonna measure from the rag joint right here all the way to the mark that we just created. That's the measurement that we need. That's gonna be the total length of our column. All right guys, so we'll measure from the top of the column down to 28 and a half. We will make a mark. make another mark on the other side of the shaft and I'll run some tape 
around it so we get it as straight as possible. looks nice and straight so if you do have access to a chop saw obviously that would make it much easier and guarantee a perfect straight cut as I'm gonna go ahead and deburr the inside of the column with this deburring tool if you don't have one of these burr deburring tools definitely recommend it um, especially when you, if you're drilling a lot of holes, doing a lot of body work, anything, any type of metal fabrication where you're drilling holes, this comes in handy greatly. Thank you to J-Rock for this one. Um, I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below of one similar to this, or this exact one if I can find it for you. All right guys, last thing we have to do is the kit comes with a bushing for the end of the column. This guy right here, it's gonna fit right in. And then they come with this little screw uh, so we're going to drill a little hole right through there and the screw is going to secure it in place. Go ahead and use the automatic punch. Now I'll drill through that uh, bushing. and we'll secure it with the screw. Now we're ready to install it. All right guys, I went ahead and removed the power steering pump from the bracket in order to more easily get it uh, lined up and installed onto the cylinder head. Um, it does look like it's gonna bolt using these two holes on the cylinder head. Um, I'm not quite sure how this would affect your car if you had air conditioning, um, but I will be adding air conditioning to this vehicle. Uh, so when that occurs, we'll go ahead and figure it out then. But for now, we'll go ahead and install it uh, like the instructions recommend right on the cylinder head here using the hardware and spacers. extra two spacers in there. Um, I'm trying to get it aligned with the second groove on the crank pulley. Let me take a look at that real quick, guys. So it does require at least a dual sheave crank pulley as well as dual sheave um, water pump fan pulley. I do have a triple here because I'm setting up for that air conditioning kit. Uh, the power steering is gonna run on this middle groove because on the, the first groove I have the alternator and that'll come up around and go around the water pump. So let's go ahead and add these spacers and see if we get a line to that middle pulley. All right guys, so I have the pump mounted. I did have to add lock washers to these bolts here. It didn't come with any, it just came with flat washers. The bolts were too long and these spacers were too short so it wouldn't get tight. Uh, so I went ahead and added lock washers to take up that extra space and now it's tight and good. And now it lines up with the second groove of the bra. Crank pulley here. Okay guys, let's get on to installing that gearbox. All right guys, so before we go ahead and install the steering gearbox into the car, uh, we have to prep these splines to receive the rag joints. Uh, what we have to do is make sure it's fully seated and then we'll take out the set screw. This one right here actually. We'll take out this set screw, make a little mark. And what we have to do is create a seat for this set screw. So we'll basically take a little file and just make a little flat spot in the splines right there. 
So that way when we tighten down the set screw, it's a nice perfect seat uh, for it to rest on and it won't uh, move, especially after we tighten down that jam nut. Uh, so let's get started doing that. All right guys, so as you can see, I took a file. and took just a little bit off where that set screw is. Um, it's very important to follow the instructions because a lot of people may think this groove right here is for that set screw, um, but it specifically says in the instructions that it is not and that you must fully seat this rag joint all the way in until it stops. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get this installed, put in the set screw in the jam nut and hope there's uh, enough room to fit in the box with the rag joint on. Uh, just make it a little bit easier. Uh, so let's go ahead and give that a whirl. Notice that that screw did go a lot further in this time um, because we made that seat for it. So now I'll go ahead and put that jam nut on so it doesn't loosen up on us. And I'll go ahead and get it in the car. All right, guys, when I lift it up into place, I'm going to kind of set it down on the frame and have it rest on the frame uh, while I grab the bolts and get them lined up for those three holes. So next we'll go ahead and install those lines. Uh, we have a return line, the one that doesn't have um, the fitting on one of the ends, the pressure fittings. Uh, this will go into the back of the power steering unit with the hose clamp. And then the pressure line of course has fittings on both ends of it. All right guys, as you can see, I have both lines uh, plumbed and tight. Uh, originally I wanted to route them kind of below the manifolds and kind of keep them tucked out of the way. Um, however, they ended up being way too close to the manifolds. Um, so I believe the way they have to go is up and over. You can see a little better there. Um, but as you know, there's not much real estate between the engine and the shock tower. So uh, up and over is how they're gonna have to go. All right guys, in the same way that we made a seat for the set screw on the gearbox, we did the same thing to the steering shaft as well. All right guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and install the column. Um, this plate is provided with the kit. It's gonna utilize the three screws that the original plate that came with your car did. And because of the orientation of the three screws, it only fits one way. Uh, these tabs are gonna face inside the car, and then this straight edge is gonna face up. Uh, also remember that um, the flat spot that we ground on the splines of the steering shaft, uh, make sure that meets up with the set screw. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get it installed. All right guys, so I have the column mocked up in place. Um, it's not permanently installed just yet because I will have to take it out to paint it. And when I paint the dash, I don't want the column in the way. Um, but what I am gonna do now is index the steering wheel straight to the gearbox, because right now I don't know exactly where the gearbox is pointed. So that way, um, if I go to install my pitman arm, I gotta make sure that it is centered along with the wheel. So as they're on the wheel, I already turned it all the way to the right until it stopped. So I'm gonna put it on somewhat straight and try to count the rotations. And then I'm gonna go halfway back and then that should orientate my gearbox straight with the wheels straight and then I can attach that pitman arm and finally connect um, the steering gear box to the uh, steering linkage. Alright guys, now that we have our steering wheel indexed with our gearbox properly, we'll go ahead and install the pitman arm connecting the steering box to the steering linkage. And I'll 
go ahead and torque everything down and that'll be a complete uh, for this power steering installation. All right guys, that's a wrap for today's video. I completed the installation of the Bergeson power steering conversion kit. Uh, the only thing I'm actually waiting for is I had to order the um, belt separately. It's not including the kit. Uh, so I put an order on for the belt and that will be a wrap for that. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, but that's gonna be a wrap. I'll see you next time. You take care.